in a very aggressive training institute within the State Department where we're trying to sensitize and educate our employees, our foreign service officers that come to your countries so that they understand what we mean by new forms of anti-Semitism and how they can look for old forms of anti-Semitism. As was said earlier, if we can't chronicle it, we can't fight it. And so monitoring and reporting on hatreds and on including anti-Semitism, we can't really put together a comprehensive strategy to fight it. And my title to monitor and combat anti-Semitism calls for trying to combat this ancient hatred. It's daunting, it keeps me up at night, but it is something I am honored to be able to work with the apparatus of the United States government, with non-governmental organizations, and with many of your governments to try and eradicate anti-Semitism. My strategy, or what success will look like to me, really calls for having other people condemn anti-Semitism. It is not headline news when someone named Hannah Rosenthal condemns anti-Semitism. It is headline news when people of other faiths, when leaders of other governments, when non-Jews who are opinion leaders call out anti-Semitism, it has a profound, potent, and impactful result. We work in bilateral agreements and, and relationships with many of your countries. We work in multilateral um, institutions like the United Nations, the OSCE, the OAS, the EU, and others to try and get them to be the mouthpiece of condemnation also. And we do this by strengthening civil society. We promote public discussions on the nature of new forms of anti-Semitism, how to recognize it, how to combat it. We reach out to non-governmental organizations, to human rights organizations, to interfaith organizations. And we do not just confront intolerance. We try to promote tolerance. We have started an initiative that we rolled out at the OSCE called ART, A-R-T, standing for acceptance, respect, and tolerance, where we identify non-governmental organizations that are interfaith, interethnic, and focus on youth. Um, we have identified six exemplary organizations already, and we look forward to hearing from you about other organizations that we can add to our art initiative. And recognizing that youth are our future, we of course, through programming dollars and our relationships, push education and awareness. The youth have to be our priority. They are our future. They're gonna take care of us in our old age. We need to make sure they're equipped to dealing with this complex and hateful, at times, world we're living in. And we need them to change the culture from fear and stereotypes to acceptance and understanding from narrow-mindedness to pluralism, from hate to tolerance. We are actually funding teacher training programs in countries and training the trainers, training the teachers that teach the future teachers on how do we deal with anti-Semitism, putting it in historical context, putting it in sociological context, and of course, recognizing what's happening today. We call out constantly governments we work with that produce and fund textbooks that refer to Jews as sons and daughters of pigs and apes, that push the protocols of the elders of Zion as a textbook in their schools. We are using old technologies and new technologies to communicate positive messages, to follow when bad messages are out there, and to figure out how we better can use these new technologies to make sure honesty, transparency is being um, applied and moved forward and giving messages to our young. I don't know why. 
We provide educational and cultural exchanges from your countries to ours and vice versa, where we hope to learn from you about things that are happening well, going well in your country so we can incorporate them and we like to show off things in our country that are going well. I want to give you some examples that we use, that I use within the State Department that I call part of the, my job title that says combating anti-Semitism. Regarding the uh, uh, regarding the uh, traditional forms of anti-Semitism, we have confronted blood libel accusations front on with people at the highest levels of your government. To combat Holocaust denial, we brought eight imams, two of which were Holocaust deniers, to Auschwitz and Dachau. And it resulted in a very strong statement where the imams unanimously condemned not only Holocaust denial, but all forms of anti-Semitism. To combat Holocaust relativism, we have um, met with museums and with government authorities and academics to discuss how do we confront historical dishonesty. To combat Holocaust glorification, we meet with governments that sponsor the television shows and ask them not necessarily to take it off, but to condemn it and make sure the people who are watching know this is hate-filled stuff. To combat the de demonization, delegitimization, and the holding Israel to different standards, we often are the only no vote in United Nations um, committees and agencies that inform the world where we stand. And when we talk about combating the hatred and fear of the other, we help build coalitions on the ground to make sure that vulnerable, isolated minority organizations are not alone, that they find each other and together can have a voice to confront it all. We've come here today to discuss data, to discuss best practices, and to learn from each other and build relationships. Jews cannot eradicate anti-Semitism alone. I want to repeat how this program started with Prime Minister Harper's statement that there can be no moral amb un ambiguity on the issue of anti-Semitism and there cannot be an excuse for any country to not move. They must condemn, they must be clear, and they must call out the hateful speech, the hate mongers, and the educational systems that promote it. I am heartened. We are represented by over 50 countries here today, and it gives me optimism that someday together we can relegate anti-Semitism into the dark annals of history. Thank you for all you're doing, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Hannah.